we give this worship team a round of applause? Holy cow, what was that? You know, X, it doesn't make sense that that song sounded that good. <laughs> we, X and I talk about how sometimes singing Christmas songs is a little, you know, interesting. You know, it's, it's not, you know, our X and mine uh, preferred songs. But the Lord definitely used that song, and I hope uh, that you felt the spirit in that. Oh, man, amazing song. It just doesn't make sense. Look at your neighbor and say, it doesn't make sense. Look at your other neighbor and say, it just doesn't make sense. Now, if uh, you have gum, you can give it to your neighbor whose breath smells a little, a little tangy from the coffee just doesn't make sense. That's the topic of our sermon today. Last week, uh, we talked about something that doesn't make sense. We talked about the life of John the Baptist, who was generous uh, beyond belief. Um, and we looked at that and we said, hey, man, it, it just doesn't make sense that John the Baptist would be generous, so generous that he would lay his whole life on the line for the gospel, who... Um, he prepared the way for Jesus, and it just didn't make sense. And we asked the question, do you consider generosity a liability or a blessing? I, I think through the life of John the Baptist, uh, being generous with all the gifts that God has given us is definitely not a liability, and it is definitely a blessing. Especially as we look at the person of Jesus who came to serve and not to be served. Generosity is not a liability, it's a blessing, and it just doesn't make sense, y'all. doesn't make sense. Today we're going to look at uh, uh, another um, hero in the Christmas story, and I hope that you can find hope in a broken world. And as we read the story of Joseph, father of Jesus, I think you would agree that it just doesn't make sense. So let's jump right in. Uh, the story of Joseph that we're going to read today is in Matthew. Matthew is the first gospel in the New Testament. If you don't have a Bible, let us know. We'd love to get you one. It'll be on the screen. It's also on our app. Um, but let's, let's dive in. This is how Jesus, the Messiah, was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. Engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant the power of the Holy Spirit, and you all say, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man. Other uh, translations say he was a good man, and all of the single ladies said, amen. He was a good man and did not want to, be, uh, want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly, and this makes sense to me. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins." All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. But he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born, and Joseph named him Jesus. Imagine with me. Joseph was head over heels for Mary. He could not stop thinking about her. He wanted to be with her every moment he was awake. And so one day he, he goes to Mary's house and he just notices as he opens the door that Mary was acting a little funny. He was, he was looking forward to watching Netflix and Holy Chilling, uh, but uh, she was just, you know, something was off. And so the night passed, and he just had to ask, hey, babe, what's going on? There was a pause. Mary was pregnant. Joseph immediately says, it doesn't, doesn't make sense, babe. 
If we didn't do the deed, you know, like we're waiting until we got married. It, it just doesn't make sense. So you must have stepped out. Mary takes another breath and tells him, you're right. It doesn't make sense. An angel came to me and the Holy Spirit allowed me, is allowing me to carry the Messiah, son of the living God. You're right. It doesn't make sense. I don't know why God would choose us. It doesn't make sense, but the Lord has called us. Joseph immediately feels betrayed, immediately loses trust in his beloved fiance, and he leaves the house, and he goes to his own house. And as he's at his own house, he is pacing back and forth, back and forth, just saying over and over and over and over again, it just doesn't make sense. And he, he vacillates from that to feeling betrayed. He vacillates from, from being betrayed, from feeling angry and frustrated and sad because all of a sudden his life that he pictured with, with his soon-to-be bride is just falling apart. And now all of a sudden he is just feeling like he is at ground zero what am I going to do, God? It just doesn't make sense. He's about to fall asleep, and an angel comes to him, and immediately, it doesn't, it doesn't. An angel says, hey, Joseph, don't be afraid. I know it doesn't make sense, but what Mary has told you is, in fact, true. And I've called you guys to be the parents of the Messiah. I know it doesn't make sense. I, I know you're just a carpenter. Uh, I, I know that you were just living your life. I know that you guys haven't had sex yet. I know all of those things are true, and it doesn't make sense. The angel probably felt like it didn't make sense to me. <laughs> but, but this is just the God that we serve, and the God has called you and has chosen you to carry this calling. And it doesn't make sense. Will you be obedient? Will you, the angel, I would imagine, told Joseph, will you be obedient and move beyond your feelings, move beyond your betrayal, move beyond your distrust, and just listen to my words and live out the calling that I have placed on your life? This is the first lesson I think we can learn from Joseph. Sometimes it seems like listening to God's voice just doesn't make sense. Any of you relate to that? Sometimes it just seems like it doesn't make sense. I could imagine Joseph is just like, okay, you're obviously the Lord. This is the Lord speaking through you, angel, and, and I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it, but it just doesn't make sense. This is causing me to, to move beyond comfort. Uh, this is causing me to, to have to trust her. This is causing me to have to trust you, and I, I, I guess I just have to listen to you. This is the gift of Joseph in our life today is sometimes listening to God's voice just seems like it doesn't make sense. Joseph, though, had the ability to discern God's voice. And I think that's the most important thing in this story today. Joseph was willing to move beyond his feelings, willing to move beyond his shock, willing to move beyond his disappointments and said, okay, Lord, I know this is you and I'm going to be obedient to your voice and I know without a shadow of doubt you are speaking to me through this angel. Now, of course, it's an angel, right? Like why would he not listen? But I think many of us hear God's voice and we know it's the Lord and we struggle to be obedient, how, how did Joseph understand God's voice, and how do you and I understand God's voice? Most of us, I would imagine, do not have the privilege of having an encounter with a living angel from time to time. <laughs> Some of us uh, can hear God's voice audibly, but for the majority of us, it just seems like oftentimes the Lord is distant. A lot of us feel like we hear the Lord's voice in intentional community where we are encouraging one another in the faith, where we are having intentional conversations about the role of Jesus in our life and how the Lord is calling us to live and operate. But oftentimes it just feels like hearing God's voice is muffled and it's a struggle. I want to encourage you, friends, that the Lord has given you a purpose to restore hope in this world, and the Lord has given you a calling, a great calling, a big calling. For some of us, it's 
to be teachers. For some of us, it's to be friends. For, for some of us, it's to be good neighbors. For some of us, it's, it's, it's to be great social workers. For some of us, it's, it's to be amazing facility coordinators. Whatever it might be, the Lord has given you a calling. And for you to follow the Lord's calling in your life, you have to be able to discern the Lord's voice. And for some of us, it's easy. But even for those of us who feel like it's easy, even Those of us who feel like it's easy, sometimes it's still hard and it feels like the Lord is distant. So I want to encourage you, the best way that you can hear the Lord's voice, especially in this season, is by reading scripture. Life naturally happens, especially during the holiday season. Struggles will come, conversations will set you off, and you will say, you know what, it doesn't make sense, but the Lord is calling me to love my enemy, and it just doesn't make sense. Or you might be going through a difficult situation and and the Lord says, you know what, you can have hope even in the midst of difficult situations. And you might even say, it just doesn't make sense. How can I have hope? Here's a couple verses to to remind you that you can have hope in in this season. Understanding that 1 John 4, 4 says, the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. The next one. Romans 8, 31, if God is for us, who can ever be against us? Next one, understanding that my grace is all you need and my power works best in weakness. Friends, when we begin to understand the power of God's word in our life, we begin to learn how to discern God's voice, whether it be in community, whether it be through our social media feeds, whether it be you were just sitting there and you were praying. All of a sudden, we have the word of God deep in us that has been marinating in our spirit, and we can be encouraged even in the midst of difficulty. But all too often when I have conversations about this, I I have friends that say, and myself included, ah, Ben, it's just really hard to find quiet time. There's never a quiet moment in my life. (laughs) Friends, I want to encourage us that it takes discipline to spend time with the Lord, just like it takes discipline to connect with those you love and long to connect with. And I believe wholeheartedly that we can be disciplined to find a quiet moment in our life to connect with the Lord. Recently, I've been com- uh, convicted that I don't need to have my space super perfect for me to connect with the Lord through Scripture. It's okay if my kids are, are yelling at me or if it's okay that, that there's five million emails ringing on my laptop. I, I just have to be disciplined to connect with the Lord, and the Lord will honor that. I recently heard one of my favorite authors and speakers, Jackie Hill Perry, say this, our lives are going to struggle if we do not have adequate time in God's word. And I find that to be so simple, it's so profound. Like, duh. (laughs) Our lives will struggle if we don't have adequate time in the Lord's word. How else will we find hope when this world gives us nothing but despair? And frustration. Joseph was able to follow his calling in his life because he had spent enough time with the Lord and he was able to discern the Lord's voice in his life. I believe some of us are struggling in the season because we have not spent adequate time in the Lord's word so that we can be reminded that in Christ, he is the light of the world. In Christ, we have hope. In Christ, we have forgiveness. In Christ, we have peace. In Christ, we can know that he is Lord over our lives. And it doesn't make sense that Joseph would have listened to the Lord, but he did. And because of that, he was able to live out his purpose in his life. The second point I want to make is sometimes it seems like being obedient to the Lord makes no sense. As I read the story, I just kept saying to myself, it just doesn't make sense. Why would Joseph be obedient to the Lord? I have to imagine that that Joseph was probably frustrated with the Lord. I have to imagine that Joseph was probably frustrated with Mary. I have to imagine that Joseph was just frustrated with the whole situation. And it would have made sense for him to to not listen to the Lord and and just be okay with, with having control over his life and control over his narrative and control over everything that he possibly could have controlled. But instead of following his own sinful and flesh nature, he he just said, okay, Lord, I got to be obedient to you even if it doesn't make sense. Even if it doesn't make sense to me, even if it doesn't make sense to the people around me, I have 
to be obedient to you. And some of you relate to being obedient to the Lord even when it doesn't make sense. For a lot of us, when we think of church, when we think of Christian relationships, discipleship relationships, things like life groups and and things like intentional discipleship conversations, we have this feeling of, man, I don't know, I've been there, done that, I've tried it before, I don't know if I want to try it again. It seems a little too difficult for me to be vulnerable with with others. I've been there, done that, I've been burned, and I would just rather, you know, push that aside. And yet the Lord is saying, hey, if you want to be my follower, you can't be my follower alone. You have to follow me in community. And I know that's hard because the church has broken people like the rest of the world. And yet it's still what we are called to. And sometimes if you're like me, you can say it just doesn't make sense. And yet the Lord says, I know it doesn't make sense. But still invest still be vulnerable, still seek authentic and intimate relationships with those around you so that you can continue to learn about your purpose and calling in your life to bring hope into the world that desperately needs it. Recently, I was talking to a friend, and uh, my friend has a similar story to a lot of us who have been hurt by the church, hurt by Christian community. And uh, he had been coming for some time, and, and he was he, uh, really enjoying coming on Sundays. And we had the conversation of, like, so what does it look like for you to be in a discipleship relationship? Because discipleship goes beyond just a one-hour-a-week uh, worship service. What does that look like for you? And we start to unpack his, his church hurt. We start to unpack his, his hurt uh, relationships within the church. And, and I, I kind of encouraged him to consider the kind of energy that he is spending, because either way, he was expending energy. Energy. He was expending energy by, by not uh, wanting to invest in the community. He was expending energy by feeling lonely and feeling isolated. And I was like, hey, you could either spend your energy doing that or you can spend your energy filling yourself up through community by being intentional about uh, inviting others, people in your life so that they can encourage you, support you, pray for you. Consider the energy that you are spending. And it doesn't make sense that the Lord would call you into a church full of broken people, all trying to figure out how to follow Jesus and follow the ways of Jesus. I understand that it doesn't make sense, but being obedient to the Lord doesn't always have to make sense because at the end of the day, Christ is Lord. And as much as it is painful and as much time as it takes for you and I to experience this authentic community It's exactly what the Lord invites us into as we are obedient to him. So, friends, how how might you be able to discern the Lord's voice in your life in this season? And how might you not push away from community, but dig deeper into community so that you can continue to be encouraged in your faith and your walk with Jesus, even if it doesn't make sense? Joseph... I believe, had to have a conversation with the Lord as he pushed through all of this. And if I put myself in Joseph's shoes, I have to believe that because of this experience in his life that the Lord allowed to happen or that the Lord uh, made it happen, I, I, I believe Joseph had to deal with forgiving the Lord for allowing him to go through such trials and tribulations internally. Have you ever been in a situation where you have had to be honest with the Lord and say, you know what, Lord, I I think there's a place in my heart that holds resentment towards you. I think there's a place in my heart that is frustrated towards you because you have allowed certain things to happen. And here's what I, I would imagine Joseph had to understand. Joseph had to understand forgiving the Lord because he had received forgiveness from God the Father for entrusting him with, with such an important purpose. Did you, do you understand? Like, Jesus was fully God and fully human. Joseph had to disciple Jesus. That is just wild to me. Joseph uh, had to teach Jesus how to read. Joseph had to teach Jesus how to pray. 
Messiah, the, the, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the one that was there from the very beginning and the one who is going to be here till the very end. God gave Joseph that purpose and it just doesn't make sense. And the Lord had to, uh, and Joseph had to learn how to forgive the Lord in his life so that he can live out his calling and his purpose. Forgiveness, friends, doesn't make sense. Can I get an amen? Amen. I don't know about you, but when I ask for the Lord to forgive me, and the Lord forgives me, and the Bible says he makes me white as snow, the Bible says that he is faithful and just to forgive me, the Bible says that that no matter what, God's grace will cover it. That just doesn't make sense. Why, Why on earth would God send his one and only son, to be born of a Virgin Mary and, and Joseph, a, a carpenter, to live in this world full of brokenness and sin so that he can have an intimate relationship with you. Why, why would the creator of the heavens and the, the universe want an authentic relationship with you, with you and I? Why would the creator of the heavens and the universe want to communicate with you and I? As much as we sin against him, as much as we sin against our neighbor, why on earth is that so? It's because God loves us, and friends, that does not make sense. It doesn't make sense. Forgiveness doesn't make sense. I think, like Joseph, I've learned the power of forgiveness from forgiving others. In uh, this next text, It's a conversation that I think has shown me so much about forgiveness. Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. This doesn't make sense. Every December, I preach about Joseph. And... For the rest of my life, as long as I'm a preacher, I will be reminded of my father who passed away 12 years ago. How I learn about forgiving others is is by learning first about how much God had forgiven me. And when I received the Lord in my life, the Lord used my relationship with my father to teach me about forgiveness because I had passages that that told me, hey... you, you got to forgive your, your father, even though he wasn't around, even though he didn't know how to love. you got to forgive him how many times? Seven times, Jesus? And Jesus is like, no, 70 times seven. And I'm like, Jesus, it doesn't make sense. And the Lord says, I know, but that's how much I have forgiven you. Because each day, my grace is there for you. Each day, my love is there for you. Each day, my acceptance is there for you, regardless of your obedience or regardless of your ability to discern my voice in your life. And each day, I can say, man, Lord, it's frustrating for me to not have my father around. This week, for some weird reason, I was taking the kids to school, and Benny is like, hey, why did your dad die? And I'm like, oh, man, why are you asking me this? It's 730 in the morning. (laughs) He's getting a little older, and so I had to tell him he was sick. He struggled with addiction. He wasn't healthy, and he passed, and that hurts. Similar to Joseph, as I think about that, I too have to figure out how I can not harbor resentment in my life because maybe I feel like the Lord took him away too early. How have you interacted with forgiveness in your life? Maybe you need to forgive a brother or a sister in Christ. Maybe you need to forgive a family member. Maybe even you might have been harboring resentment and from, to the Lord, and, and maybe that's what you need to bring to the Lord. But friends, hear this good news, that God loves you so much that he would send his one and only son to love you, to forgive you, and it doesn't make sense. But that's how good God is in our life. Friends, as we sing this next worship song, I, I want to invite you to think about forgiveness, to think about how you might need to forgive a brother or a sister, a friend, a family member, spouse, 
Maybe even you need to go there with the Lord and, and have a conversation with him about how you've been harboring these things that are not godly. Bring it to him. Allow him to receive it. And be open to the work of the Holy Spirit in your life to transform your heart, to transform your mind. And it doesn't make sense, but the Lord wants to see you whole. It doesn't make sense, but the Lord wants to see you thriving in forgiveness and belonging. But you have to bring it to him. So as we sing this song, Lord, I pray that you would give us a boldness. I pray that you would give us courage. I pray that you would give us humility to think about forgiveness in a new way today. Lord, we thank you that you do forgive us and you cleanse us of our sins and you make us white as snow. Lord, let your forgiveness wash over us so that we can continue to live into who you have called us to be in the world. And as we bring these heavy things to you, Lord, as we bring these things that maybe some of us have been clinging to for years and years, I pray that you would be gentle, that you would be kind, that you would be loving, that you would remind us that you want the best for us because you are, in fact, for us and not against us. So, Lord, receive these offerings today. Make us new. Show us and teach us about your forgiveness. Amen and amen. Friends, if you are here today and you want to put your trust in the Lord in a new way by giving him your life, you can fill out a card that's in front of you to let us know so that we can pray with you, so that we can walk alongside of you. you fill out the card and put it in the back at the connection point where Pastor TJ will be. And Pastor TJ has an announcement to make. I want to invite him up here. I, I will be back there. Uh, you can hand me your connect cards um, in just a few minutes. Wanted to make a quick announcement, though, uh, before the end of the service. Um, this past week, I officially submitted my resignation here from the boulevard, and I will be stepping down from my role. Um, so today, here's the deal. Today's not goodbye. Today is goodbye is coming. But here's the thing. There's some, thing, there's some really, really good things happening here at the boulevard. Particularly, there's a growth this past year that we've experienced in the life group ministry. And I've encouraged Ben and the leadership to double down on that and to find somebody who will best lead that ministry. But there's another thing going on in my own life, and that is what God is calling me to do in ministry. And so that's what's next, is I'm figuring out and seeking God's voice and what's happening in my own life, in my own ministry. Um, so, again, today's not goodbye. There's really good things happening here at the, at the Boulevard. Um, but we'll save that. January the 14th yep. will be my final day here. So we got about a month. Yeah. Um, we got really great things happening for the holidays and the kitchen team and all that. Um, so we're going to make sure that all those things are buttoned up um, before my time is over. But this is a great church. You got good leaders. It's, it's, it's a sad day to say goodbye always, but um, God's got good plans for this place. Yeah. So, so uh, this might be a shock to many of you, and you might be feeling disappointed like our staff and leadership are feeling. Um, but we are just really grateful for the leadership of yeah. TJ Thank you. and Thanks, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I mean, as he mentioned, uh, through his leadership, he, he grew our, our life group ministry to over 20 life groups, um, starting our kitchen and getting all that situated. And we're sad to see you go, brother, but we're also excited to see how the Lord is going to use you. Thank you. Um, in the next couple of weeks, he's, he's not leaving. He's, he's sticking around. So please reach out to him. Thank him. Encourage yeah. him. Uh, we'll celebrate him on January 14th. So come on January 14th, ready to celebrate him. And um, before we go, though, uh, we're going to pray for you as you enter into your last couple of weeks here at the Boulevard. Thanks. Cool. Jesus, we are grateful uh, for TJ and the blessing that he has been to our church. Lord, in this uh, final weeks here at the Boulevard, I pray that you would just bless him with, with peace. I pray that you would encourage him in the work that he has done here. And Lord, I pray uh, that you continue uh, to guide him and his family in this next season. In your name we pray, Lord. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. Friends, go in peace to love and serve.